Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a very well-known character in the Sega IP, known all across the world, mostly in America, for being a great mascot and a very cool character. He has been around for multiple years, over 32 to be exact when this is coming out. But Sonic has had a great line of stuff happening, but Sonic has also had a lot of bad stuff happen to him as well. He's had people complain about inconsistencies in story, inconsistencies in character, and inconsistencies in different dimensions with classic characters and multiple dimensions and different stuff like that. Some of that stuff is is warranted but some of that stuff just doesn't exist and that's why i'm making this video today to talk about japanese sonic maybe like japanese sonic isn't it just sonic no there's a totally different interpretation of sonic in a different area well the original area was actually created but you know i'm just saying in a totally different area where he has been consistently in character the stories are a little bit better and everything seems a little bit more together with Sonic. And you may be saying, what do I mean by this? Well, in Japan, Sonic is a consistent character. What do you mean by consistent character? Well, in Japanese, Sonic's characteristics and characterization overall has been the same for 31 years. Yes, 31 years. The stories come out a little bit better in Japanese as well and a lot of bunch of other stuff that I can't really talk about right now because I'll make videos on them on their own but Sonic has been very consistent in Japan for multiple years. Now this doesn't mean that all the stories and the pond tech and graph stuff doesn't exist. No it still does. There are still some Sonic stories that have very bad written storylines and stuff like that but we're just here to talk about Sonic's character because this is the giant problem I have with the Sega franchise and how they treat Sonic in America. And it's been going on for years. It's not a new thing. Sonic has been inconsistent since 1991. Yeah, shocking. I'll go into the reason why, but it's a very surprising thing that you really never thought that would be happening in America or with Sonic in general. And I have kind of a little bit of a case study for this, if you want to say. I call it the anime effect. What do I mean by anime effect? Well, in early eras of anime, mostly Dragon Ball Z, maybe some things back in the day. I don't know for sure if Hunter x Hunter was out back then in dub. Back in that day, they had very much super inconsistencies with their animes. Based on whatever kind of filtering and different stuff like that they had to do in America, they had to change the animes drastically. And I would call it the Dragon Ball effect because that's the biggest focus I'm having right now because I'm a Dragon Ball fan as well. I'm also a big weeb, so I watch other anime as well, but mostly Dragon Ball is my main focus sometimes. But when we're talking about Dragon Dragon Ball specifically, Dragon Ball has this as a big inconsistency that goes on with Sonic the Hedgehog. It basically connects. Sonic as a character, he's been consistent throughout all the years. But when we go to America, America thought, oh, people wouldn't know that this is Sonic and that this and that, that, that is Sonic. And people won't understand it here because at this time, I'll admit Back in that day, anime was not really a popular thing to be in the zeitgeist like it is today. Like, anime is in the giant zeitgeist today, known by people around the world, but it wasn't like that back in the day, which I think is sad because I technically grew up in the era where the zeitgeist was perfect, where there were anime fans and the dub was done correctly and the subs and music and everything was done correctly in anime and Sonic was done correctly. But going on with the whole Dragon Ball Z thing, back in the day, when Dragon Ball was being done very inconsistently and being uploaded very late compared to the Japanese and the Japanese was a little bit further than them, they would go to the Kaizenshu and different stuff like that to get their information on what they're doing in the Japanese and they would even go there to find the original subtitles of the original context of Dragon Ball in Japanese because it was not available at that time. So they kind of had to bring it in overall over time. But now in today's era, all anime has correct subtitles and correct music and different stuff like that like I said before. So going back to America, in 1991 he was inconsistent. Sonic as a character was inconsistent from the beginning. It's not Sega of Japan's fault, it's Sega of America's fault. With Sega of America they decided to make their own changes which literally messed up Sonic in a lot of ways. Sonic originally in Japan was a totally different character and when it was brought to Sega of America they said oh people don't know what hedgehogs are, people don't know this and that or don't think this will work 
work, we're going to change it to make it work for American audiences. To be honest, this was nothing new in the whole Japanese game coming to America. Mario's had the same thing. Originally in Japan, when the original Donkey Kong arcade game was going on, they originally just called him Jumpman. Then America kind of gave him the name Mario, and a little bit over the years, before the first Super Mario game, he got his name Mario. And so, it kind of became an official thing. But that's not what happened in the American side of Sonic, and I don't think it should happen. But I'm going to see what I was saying. With American Sonic, they basically changed his character. They literally took out Earth. They made it a totally different thing. Made it very inconsistent with the Japanese, which is weird because over time, they will literally change it back to the Japanese, which clearly showed that there was a problem with that. And even to say that maybe Sega Japan backed it up, no. You can look at Sega of Japan's original copy of Sonic the Hedgehog. It clearly shows it has English text, clearly stating that it could come to America clearly having these little English quotes so it could come to America. Sega does have these ideas of what Sonic's supposed to be based off these American things, but Sonic is overall Japanese because these are Japanese writers making something that they think Americans would want. And I think that's the great thing about Sonic because it feels American and it feels cool and it connects to us in America, but it's very Japanese at its core. With Sega of Japan, they plan on this coming to America, but they kind of overall just kind of accepted that Sega of America knew what they were doing and kind of just push them and make Sonic work in America even though they kind of plan for Sonic in Japanese to come to America but I guess Sega of America messed it up for us and I'm not going to say that you can't like the American Sonic this is just a kind of retrospective and kind of understanding that I want you guys to have when you think about Sonic and points we'll go into later with Sonic that has been a thing in the community today one of the big reasons I am making this video today is because there are multiple YouTubers who watch Dragon Ball who have been around earlier and way longer than me who don't know about this anime effect. For example, Nick the Game Apologist, Sir Skeptic, Evan from Tales Channel, and probably some other Sonic YouTubers I forgot who had that. Most of the time, they are the main people who really, not unfairly, and it's not like they don't have the right to do it, but they always talk about how Sonic's stories are inconsistent, they always talk about the Shadow Incident, they always talk about the Classic Sonic Incident, and they always talk about Sonic's characterization and how inconsistent Sega is with characterization and stuff like that and how Ian Flynn is kind of the next guy to take over. I disagree with that totally because Ian Flynn is not capable of doing Sonic any justice. I can name other people who can. For instance, Emmy Jones. I love her. I love Sonic and Tails R. Go and watch it. Even if you want to add in the fact that, oh, but today it's different and Sega of America is kind of implementing more of the American side and Sega of Japan has back in the day taken stuff from the American side. Yeah, but overall it's still a Japanese product and it is still still Japanese at the end of its core. If Sega of Japan takes anything from Sega of America, that doesn't matter. It's still their story in their context, in their ideas, in their character. And those ideas were just made under their watch so they can use them if they want to. It kind of doesn't depend on, oh, because the Americans, the Americans make it better. No, they really don't. And like I said, you can like the American side, but this whole thing is just talking about who Sonic is and what is his character and why do we have this idea that Sonic is this way. This has nothing to do with trying to start an argument with any of the people I just mentioned previously. So enough rambling, let's go into the actual character of Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, it's kind of easy. Sonic is this character who's rude, he has a bad tood, and he's all about attitude. He's also a very extroverted guy. He's also a little bit of a jerk, if you take it kind of here and there. He may steal your girl. Thank you, Tails. He also may date Sally, because he's a ladies man, and he likes to get girls, and he likes to be in relationships and stuff like that. He also has his big old group of friends. He also is a very rad dude from the 1990s. He's a very cool dude. <laughs> or whatever. Sonic also lives on the world Mobius and he fights Dr. Robotnik and he also saves the animals from robots. None of that is Sonic. Just want you to know that none of that is Sonic because that is the American side making Sonic different. If you like that, that's fine. I know Nick the Game Apologist likes it, and I respect him for liking it, but it's not Sonic. If we want to define who Sonic is, we have to know Sonic. And we're not going to be going off some random American translation, which has no indication or no idea who Sonic is, what Sonic is about, or even who he is at his core. What was he made to be? 
So let's just start with this. Sonic is a blue hedgehog who was born on Earth with humans and animals living co extinctually together with Dr. Eggman, who is his arch rival. In Sonic 1, this is not their first time fighting. They have fought multiple times in the past, even before the first game. So they are already arch rivals to this point. And that's all the backstory he has. And I think that's all he needs. Any more explanation would be cool. I would love to see if Sonic had parents, if he had anyone else in his life. I would really like that. I would like that a lot. I'm not gonna lie. But for right now, that's all we need for Sonic. Sonic is Sonic and he doesn't really need a background because we care about the character not the background really that's not the most important thing in sonic's life even though you get like the whole owl lady or archie parents whatever they do i generally forgot all about archie so now we're going to talk about characterization and how i'm going to do this is going to be a little different and go to the points i made earlier sonic has two similar personalities for my sake we're going to call the one from 1991 maybe in between games ending at unleash that's classic sonic it's not because he is chubby short cute and a little bit light blue or dark blue whatever color you like with him it's not because of that it's because this is the characterization made by the original creators of sonic the hedgehog since the beginning of the first game this has been sonic the second one we are calling the maikawa sonic it's not a drastically different sonic he just has small differences that makes him different. He's still the same Sonic, which is why I still go with the point that he is consistent all the way through. Because Sonic doesn't change dramatically, he just adds his own little flair to Sonic here and there, going off of that more cool factor of Sonic, not going full on 90s, but just being cooler. That's it. So let's go into the characterization of Japanese Sonic. Japanese Sonic is really defined as being a freedom fighter, not an actual freedom fighter, with people he just is a guy who strives for freedom he isn't described as being a hero he just does what feels right and what feels right to him is having everyone be free everyone living without sadness everyone living their lives to the best ability that is what sonic is sonic wants to take everything in a positive light he does not take things in a negative light ever and even if he does personally he doesn't say it out loud or tell people about it out loud for another reason which i will explain later let's go on to sonic's attitude sonic is described as having an attitude but it is not as dramatic as the american side it is not his whole character it does not define his character in the 90s that is what the american side has emphasized over here which does not need to be emphasized because sure we can have an attitude and we can have this whole 90s too and stuff like that but it's only really a thing that should not be for everyone i know people like it because the whole american thing of just being cool and stuff like that but it's not sonic and i don't find that interesting about sonic to me personally and even to go into little thing about sonic sonic loves nature sonic loves the beauty of nature he loves the green grass and the wind and the sun and everything that makes up the world sonic is best friends with the world for better terms technically with chip he is but when we're talking about just like theoretically or metaphorically or rhetorically he's best friends with the world Sonic loves the world. Heck, that's why he fights Eggman in the beginning. Eggman is trying to destroy that world that he loves, and Sonic is against that with a sense of justice and a sense of freedom that makes him want to stop him. You can even see more of Sonic's love for the world in his little pictures here and there and adventure and plenty of other games here and there where you see Sonic just chilling on the beach relaxing sonic loves the beach he loves to be around the beach he loves to sit on a chair and just chill at the beach he loves to take naps at beaches and stuff like that he is very comfortable near water and even if you look to sega of japan and whatever certain videos they have where they have sonic station live sonic in a q a is talking about how he loves the thrill of water he loves to run on water because of the thrill sonic is a thrill junkie he is very much a hyperactive guy when it comes to running and being free he loves he has so much fun with it he enjoys it very much and that is very much a part of his character his love for freedom and just running and just being able to be himself and use it to kind of push away all the negative problems that he's had in his life heck even in sonic unleashed he says this is my escape i'm running through this world and i'm not looking back you can take that both literally and metaphorically with sonic because sonic is a guy who does not look at the past he only worries about the future his escape is running being free being positive 
positive, being this very positive role model to everyone while also being a person at the end of the day. He loves what he does and he loves to be free. This is all just Sonic and I think it all beautifully represents him and why I love Sonic as a character. Also, just a little side check I want to go on. Yeah, Sonic cannot swim. Everyone should know this. I'm just kind of bringing it up just in case in the argument for anything that I forget, you know. Sonic in his character is also, which I hate that the American does, make him very cocky. Sonic is self-confident. He is very brave and he's very playful, but he is never cocky. That's what the American side always emphasizes and I hate that because Sonic is not cocky. If you look at any other video besides people who know Japanese Sonic or any other tweet or anything like that, they always say Sonic is cocky. Sonic has never been cocky in his life. I'm trying to defend him, I may sound very deep about it, but I'm just saying he's not cocky. He's a very confident person. If you think Sonic is cocky, then go and relook at everything Sonic in the Japanese and tell me if he's actually cocky. Sonic is a very calm guy and a very confident guy, but he is not cocky. Sonic has never shown to be cocky unless you count adventure and certain things here and there where Sonic has been cocky and that has gotten him in trouble. And even then, if you look at Sonic's lines in the classic Sonic description, he he is always serious in these situations with Eggman. He doesn't take them lightly like American Sonic who takes these things as a breeze. Sonic is always serious. You can look at his original sprite. He is not smiling. He's not acting all cocky and all fun. You may see later that Sonic is smiling while having fun. He's having fun being more playful. This is the pinnacle of fun for him. It's not something that he's like, heh. Eggman sucks. He can't beat me. Suck it, Egghead. Like, no, that's not him. And I think this goes into another thing that I've heard from Splash Dash, for example. They talk about, oh, maybe Sonic should have kind of developed into being okay with being in a team. No, Sonic understands when you need other people. Sonic understood that from the beginning. Maybe you could say Heroes was a little bit of an arc for Sonic to kind of get used to being in a team, because Sonic is usually more of a solo person, but not really. He's kind of okay overall with being in a team. Maybe he just kind of gets more comfortable in it in Heroes, but but he is always comfortable with being in a team. He's comfortable with getting help. That ego or whatever doesn't get in the way with Sonic. Sonic is okay with the type of stuff. So Sonic does not need the type of development ever. Even looking at Sonic CD and him taking things seriously, you can see that he is taking it seriously in this opening. He is not smiling. He's not even having fun at this point. But he overall maybe grows more to kind of have fun with these situations. But overall right now, he's just serious. He takes these situations seriously in every game. But overall, just bringing this up as a major example. Sonic at times is very much described to be very impatient and a little bit impulsive. That is pretty much good for his character because that is a well-known flaw. I'm bringing it up right now because it's a flaw. Remember that. I'm just saying that for now. Remember that. He is a guy who kind of does rush into certain situations but does not take away from another characteristic that he has. And this other characteristic that he has is called observation. Sonic loves to observe a lot of situations. Especially we look at certain games like Black Knight, unleashed or anything like that a lot of the times sonic gets in trouble because of his impatience not thinking things through or his observation sonic is known to observe certain situations sonic is known to read the room at certain times so his observation skills are pretty good but he overall doesn't think things through he just does what feels right to him even what i think is a very good example which i originally thought was a very bad example sonic lost world sonic charges in and kicks the console out of eggman's hand even though the Zeddy are evil, it doesn't matter to him. He just does what he thinks is right. It makes sense for his character to just kick it off Eggman's hand with no second thought because he also doesn't think things through. Another one you could also bring up is Sonic Forces. Sonic fighting Infinite, he charges in without thinking things through and he gets his ass whooped for it. These are very well known moments of Sonic doing these things. Also, another thing about Sonic, he is actually not smart, but he has what they call street smarts. I'll give a little context to what I think Sonic's street smarts are. Like I said before, Sonic can understand a person very well. He's very polite to certain people. He's a very well-mannered, well-known person. Sonic has street smarts. He understands the world around him more than like Tails and Knuckles who understand mechanics and certain stuff like that. Sonic just understands the world around him and can adapt to any situation. It doesn't take away from the fact that Sonic is described as having a short attention span. I think that just kind of works that Sonic Sonic, after a point when he's talking to someone, he will just ignore them and walk away, or he may forget about something, like a date with Amy that he's done before in the past. 
Well, of course not that time. He was in a literal book. And even if you want like a little small character flaw, Sonic is very insecure about his belly. He has a little bit of an insecurity about his little bit of chubbiness that he has in modern and classic, but mostly modern because that's most of the time we've seen him talk and most of the time seen him do certain actions. Sonic is actually very insecure with his stomach. And... I got most of this stuff and other stuff that I will bring up from Fukuro Huseke. She makes videos on Sonic and his introverted nature and just certain things that Sonic does that are just a part of his character and that are very consistent. Another point of Sonic's character, he is very well and solidly known to care about freedom and independence. As a character, he takes the independence as a personal thing. Sonic does have an idea of what he thinks is wrong and right, but he will not take anyone else's ideas. It's even said in his song, it doesn't matter, now what happens, I will never give up the fight. Long as the voice inside tells me to run and fight, it doesn't matter who is wrong or who is right. Sonic does what is right in his head. So technically any authority like Gun or Shadow or Knuckles, or Eggman, or anyone telling him what to do or who to be, he does not take shit from that. And even going back to the whole Christmas Island situation, Sonic was born on Christmas Island, but Sonic in his character bios is kind of described as being a nomad. He kind of doesn't stay in one place. He kind of just goes to other beaches and other areas and different stuff like that to relax or to be. Sonic is very much described as being an adventurous guy, which is why his first 3D game was called Sonic adventure. Sonic at his core is a very adventurous guy. He does not stay in one place for long and it takes place since the beginning of Sonic. In Sonic 1, 2, and 3, Sonic was just exploring the world. Even CD, he's just been exploring the world all this time. But overall with Sonic's character, he's just very much described as this character who lives with freedom, lives with the idea of freedom and going wherever he wants, being whatever he wants, deciding whatever he wants, and doing what he thinks is right or wrong. He doesn't have anyone to tell him who who he is or who he isn't which is very important to think about sonic because sonic as a character should be taken as himself as a character he shouldn't be taken as multiple interpretations and stuff like that but of course even taking naps anywhere he wants like on beaches and stuff like that as we've seen in previous games and new games Sonic is associated with beaches and he loves beaches and he loves to relax. Sonic is a very calm, relaxed person at the end of the day. Even if you want another example of Sonic's very relaxed, very napping everywhere kind of character, look at Sonic X. Sonic is always seen napping on Chris's house. It is a very well-known place for him to nap and very comfortable for him to nap. Also, Sonic is also described as being a very angry person or a person who can easily be angried. If you look at certain games like... Sonic 06 where Elise dies, Sonic slams his hand on the ground in anger. He's not always openly open with it, but at certain times he is open. Like with Jet when he rigged the race so he could win at the end, Sonic slams the ground in anger. Or if you want to see a side of Sonic who is super angry and takes out all his rage on someone, you can look perfectly at Sonic Unleashed. When Sonic is in his werehog form fighting Eggman to the center of the earth, Sonic is beating on Eggman in full on rage. He is not being the calm collector the person he usually is he is forced into this side of anger that is just being pulled out of him by Eggman and by what he's doing to the planet because even in werehog form sonic is also very insecure just like who he is with his own stomach よくまりすぎだろってのもあるけど俺はあの時ムキムキのウェアホックに変身しててさロボットをボックボックにした後エッグマンをロボットからコックピットごと引っこ抜いてあげく空の彼方までぶん投げたんだよであとでちょっとや
Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic Battle, and Sonic Forces. And it makes sense towards another idea with Sonic that everyone has a problem with. The kind of idea that Sonic doesn't kill. I'll definitely go more into that when I go more into IDW and Flynn one day. God, I don't hope I get to that. But this idea that Sonic kills, he does. But at the same time, he doesn't kill. He wants to keep them around. Why? Because he likes to have fun. They are a sense of fun for him. They are a sense of challenge. Sonic is a very confident person, but he's not cocky. Sonic doesn't keep them around because he has a cocky attitude about it and he knows he can beat them all the time. He has a confident attitude and knows he can beat Eggman, but he also knows he can beat any enemy he puts effort into because Sonic is a character who really doesn't care if they're alive or dead. He just wants to live his life. So, of course, killing them is a weird option for him to go to for most of these villains because if he got rid of those villains he would lose a sense of fun like they said in the Sonic Station Q&A Sonic literally says if Eggman is gone he would still try to find a new way to have fun Sonic's not against the idea of killing Eggman or anything like that Sonic has kind of tried in CD but the thing is Sonic has so much fun with Eggman and he keeps surviving randomly it's okay that he's around Sonic doesn't think oh I really just need to kill Eggman because he'll be around eventually and I'll be there to stop him because it's his type of fun he can kill villains if it is needed he has done it with big giant gods that have tried to destroy the earth it's nothing new we just don't understand that he's not doing it for the sake he's a hero sonic is not a hero he does not think of himself as a hero so i don't know why so many people depict him as that because everyone wants him to be a hero even going to an idea in the idw just off something of nick the game apologist nick literally talks about this very bad idea that over the years in the sonic the hedgehog franchise he's become more and more of a superhero which is not true he was never a superhero to begin with the only reason why you think that is because sonic is doing these abnormal things that he would need help from a team with like with sally and all those because he's kind of used to the american side where sonic isn't as capable as he usually is in the main games but that's the thing that's not really sonic he has this previous idea because he was born and raised on the american side of sonic which is why i can't really take that seriously and the idea that nick thinks that Sonic can grow into this IDW version, that's not true because it ignores everything that Japanese Sonic was trying to do. It doesn't make sense. Sonic would kill if it is needed. Sonic does not think on the idea of redeeming people. Sonic does not think that he's been through the show over and over again that he needs to redeem everyone. Technically, he has not redeemed many people. Let's be honest. The only reason why he did was because the show of his character. Sonic did not redeem them. Sonic did not talk it out with them. He only did that to certain villains because certain villains could be talked to like for instance merlina merlina had a very clear view of how she saw things in the beginning sonic understood that at first and was kind of confused but didn't say anything but later on when he sees her become a villain he's more sympathetic after he defeats her but then talks to them if he has a reason to be sympathetic towards them. Sonic's not going to be sympathetic towards every villain just because he's redeemed a couple. No, he's going to fight them as a villain. He's going to take them out. If he already had a reason beforehand, which is what Sonic has every time. For another example, Knuckles. In Sonic 3, you fight Knuckles. You're brawling it out with Knuckles. You beat him to a pulp, knock him to the ground. But then you see that Knuckles was tricked by Eggman and then he decides to help you. Clearly showing that Knuckles did not have malicious intent. And even with Shadow, Shadow was changed to that way by Gerald. It wasn't in his own accord. He was changed to be that way. Shadow was a pure character in the beginning. But after what Gerald did, Shadow became different. Shadow became the Shadow we know in SA2. Sonic didn't even bring that out of him. He just kept being himself, which then influenced Amy, which then influenced Shadow. That's how it works. Sonic is not the guy to talk to everyone. Just because he did it to Merlina doesn't mean he does it to everyone. That's clear ignorance of the stories that you're not paying attention to. And I think that shows that Ian does not understand Sonic at all because that idea and how he says it and how he rants is so dumb and I'll go into that later in the rest of this video. Sonic influences every character by being Sonic and the people around him who are influenced by him can influence others. Even going into a little bit of a different kind of situation with Sonic, we're going to talk about Sonic's introvertedness. What is that? Sonic's not an introvert? Actually, he is, and Fukuro Hoseki actually got me into the idea and made me love the idea of Sonic being an introvert. Of course, Sonic is not a quiet person. Doesn't mean he's not an introvert. Introverts themselves can be the life of the party, just like how extroverts cannot be the life of the party. It is not a specific thing. 
there is a percentage to how much of an introvert and an extrovert you are as a person. It is not just a specific thing you are just crowded in. So Sonic can be extroverted in certain ways, but he's also introverted in a lot of ways. And what do I mean by that? Going back to the naps thing with Sonic, Sonic in Sonic X and Sonic Adventure, Sonic is just napping by himself. He does not have anyone else around unless they are just already there hanging with him. Even in large groups with Sonic, if Sonic does not have anything really important to say, Sonic will be very quiet. He's a very quiet person in most big crowded situations unless there's something really to say. If he's not doing that, otherwise he's observing the situation and letting them get their say out. Which is what Sonic does a lot, especially when Eggman monologues and stuff like that. Instead of attacking him, he observes the situation, like I've said before. And even in a lot of previous stuff before 2010, Sonic has been stated to say, or has been said to him, long time no see. Meaning that Sonic could have been away for days, weeks, maybe months. Sonic could probably go away for even years if he really wanted to. Sonic is not the type of guy to stay around people for a long period of time. He likes his alone time, just like a lot of introverts do. I personally like that myself as well. I like to have my time where I can just relax and be by myself and do things that I like. I also like time where I am with people, just like Sonic does. Sonic enjoys his time with people, but the majority of the time, he would rather be on his own. Just like Sonic Adventure 1, he literally jumps and leaves everyone to clean up the city while Sonic wants to go do his thing. That is just Sonic in his introverted nature. Sonic in his introvertedness is also a type of character who doesn't splurt out his emotions. Unless his anger, like I've said before, Sonic will let it out during certain situations. But with any other emotion, he does not really go in-depth on how he feels on certain situations. Especially looking at Sonic and his secret rings, which kind of explores that with Sonic. Him having to feel and kind of contain all these emotions and kind of just bringing them all out to fight a Razor Jin, Which I think also kind of goes into his anger, but I'll go more into that when I talk about Sonic and his secret rings. Heck, he even has giant bursts of emotions coming out, like for instance when Elise was dead, and so was Shara. Sonic is the type of guy to be very sympathetic towards people, especially during death. Even at times where Sonic gets complimented, he is even seen blushing, saying heh, whenever something happens, because Sonic is also a guy who doesn't really take compliments well. He may be confident in his own speed and himself as a character, but overall, he's not the type of guy to take compliments himself. He'll either be very coy with it or be very shy around people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and even when he's in a big crowd being celebrated, he will run out of there. Or if he is, he'll be very subtle in how he feels about it. He'll be a little happy but cover his face or try to not let people see him be embarrassed. Because Sonic is very embarrassed when he is around certain people and they talk about how great he is. Which also ignores the dumb idea that Sonic has an ego, which is why I really think if you watch this video and you really connect with it, stop saying Sonic has an ego. It doesn't make sense. Even one thing I want to touch on is Sonic's feelings towards romance and how he feels about love. Let's go with Amy. We're not gonna go fully in depth with it because there's an Amy video coming out about that soon. Or whenever I release it, I'm oh god, I swear I've been working on this for months. Sonic is not in a hatred with Amy. I've saw people kind of interpret Sonic and Amy's relationship as, oh, Sonic kind of hates Amy. Sonic doesn't really like Amy. He thinks she's gross. That's not what it is. It's Sonic introverted nature and not showing his emotions that kind of cause him to push away Amy. And also his sense of freedom, which overall just makes him not want to be around Amy or be in a relationship because if he's in a relationship, he'll overall not be able to do what he thinks he wants to do. At least it's what he thinks. I think that over time, 
if they did it right, Sonic as a character could slowly want to be in a relationship. I've had that myself, where I kind of slowly want to be more and more into a relationship growing up. Sonic can go through that too. Sonic can develop, but he does not need to be dramatically changed. Sonic overall would just kind of have to learn that Amy accepts him for his freedom. So if Sonic's not around as much, but comes back whenever he's relaxing and stuff like that, like what Fukuto Hoseki said in her What If of Sonic dating Amy, Sonic would be around, he would go away and come back to Amy's house to relax whenever and even going into the whole idea of him being awkward around females look at sonic x where sonic is seeing these two girls complimenting sonic sonic is over here blushing and runs out because sonic is not used to this type of situation especially being complimented by girls it is described in his early bios as being a ladies man but Overall, that could be interpreted in so many ways, even though the main way is like, oh, you're good with the ladies. He is good with the ladies. He had Elise. He had Amy. He had those two girls. People think Sonic is cute. Sonic is a little confident in it, but he's not going to mention it because of his whole shyness. And even going into lately in a Japanese, Sonic does kind of have feelings for Amy kind of growing. It could be because of the cause and effect of Ian Flynn in Sonic Frontiers that Sonic is more open. So Sonic is kind of able to show more that he can kind of has an interest for Amy but overall in Frontiers he does show a growth of liking Amy he kind of wants to be with Amy but overall he can't fully go into it and I feel it's a little bit rushed because it's kind of contradicting itself to kind of work with the English side in IDW. <laughs> ちょっと時々パワフルすぎるけどいつもいろいろまあ感謝してるさオッケー回答終わり音速一問一答Thank you but the main reason is his emotions why he doesn't hang around Amy like that and doesn't like her all up on him but Sonic is also a very kind of personal non-touchy kind of guy he doesn't really get touchy with his friends most of the times you'll maybe see a fist bump or like something not like a hug Sonic doesn't really like hugs even in Sonic Forces you can see Tails trying to give Sonic a hug and Sonic kind of keeps his distance because Sonic's not really used to hugs Sonic's not really used to being kind of crowded his freedom kind of stops him from being crowded in by a hug but Sonic is in Frontier is actually more comfortable with being around Amy and kind of having his arms around her, but it doesn't feel gradually grown. It just feels like it's forced because of IDW and Ian Flynn. That's why I keep bringing this up. But you also could kind of say you kind of see a comfortability with hugging or touching like that because Sonic does actually carry all the females he saves. So that could be a thing he does. Sonic does have a kind of okayness when it comes to saving them where he has to hold on to them. Even you can see in CD, he kind of just tiptoes away and runs away from Amy after that effect but even going back into like the happy attitude and the positive attitude sonic does that a lot even when it comes to like certain situations that are very bad and if certain situations are bad and he doesn't know how to handle them because he can't handle every situation that's another flaw he really isn't good at handling every situation even for example with sonic x when cosmo dies and sonic brings cosmo's last piece to tails tails is crying and banging on him while sonic is sitting there quietly and seriously comforting tails and not really touching him but overall just being there as a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Even going into this episode of Sonic X, where Eggman fixes the moon and Sonic is destroying these beacons that are made to give power to the city, Sonic is just doing it without telling anyone and everyone's questioning is if Sonic is evil, mostly because he's doing what he thinks is right. So as Sonic is doing this, he's destroying everything and stopping all these beacons from doing whatever they're doing. And finally, close to the end of the episode, Knuckles finally asks, <laughs> だから暑くなるなって。でもしょうがねえだろ。故障であれが動かせないんだから。その間は動かさないって。動いてるじゃないか。何？だいたい地球は回ってるんだぜ。それに合わせて月も動かなくちゃああいう風になるはずないじゃ
だったら最初からそう言えばいいじゃないか誰か俺に聞いたかみんな分かってると思ったよ Clearly that in situations, if you don't ask what Sonic is doing, he will not tell you. He will just do it because that's what he thinks is right. And he is not an overly open person unless you ask him for certain things. And even going into something deep that Sonic X goes into, because Sonic X, like I've been bringing up this whole time, actually goes into Sonic's character deeply in a certain way. Heck, look at this part right here with Sonic and Eggman. Sonic is talking to Eggman and Eggman kind of understands Sonic because they've been rivals for so long. And he even talks talks about even though Sonic likes to act like everything is good and he loves being a free man but he's also going to kind of miss being around his friends all the time. <laughs> Sonic has kind of a sense of loneliness. Even though Sonic loves to have times where he goes out on his own, he likes to come back to people who are around him. And Sonic feels kind of sad at the end of this where Sonic doesn't want to leave. He wants to be in the city, he wants to be with his friends all the time. But when he knows when he goes back to his world, he can't. Can't. He literally has to go back to being by himself, which he enjoys sometimes, but he clearly doesn't want it all the time. Which I personally think could be a great conflict and a great conclusion where Sonic could actually be more comfortable around Amy and it could maybe be a thing. So the Sun Amy ship can go on for years. A lot of this stuff I mentioned comes from Fukuro Hoseki, but it also comes from just like an understanding of Sonic. When you look at Sonic, he isn't just what he says or what sometimes you observe from Sonic that makes him him. You also gotta look at how he stays how he does certain things because Fukuro Hoseki actually goes into all the stuff that Sonic does that's small and that kind of describes his character and that kind of goes into certain things that he does like if I remember correctly Sonic folding his arms shows him in an ideal uncomfortable state so that's kind of a thing go and look at her channel to go and see stuff about that all right now that's pretty much everything I need to talk about with classic Sonic now we're going to go into Mayakawa Sonic which to be honest there's not much different the only thing different about Mayakawa Sonic is the fact that he's just a little bit more snarkier and he's a little bit more expressive and cooler. Like, as you can see in most of Mayakawa stuff, I even brought up Sun here and there. For instance, with Shara and with Elise, Sonic is very much more expressive than you'll usually see him in the classic Sonic kind of era. And now I'll put something up here on screen that shows all the games that Mayakawa specifically worked on and used his characterization. And overall, these go into the kind of idea that Mayakawa does these things. He's definitely more snarkier because as you can see there are certain times where Sonic is making more references to like amusement parks like in Secret of Rings or talking about how Shadow said Oi Shadow naze ano kuroi yatsura no mikata o suru yatsura no mikata nani o kudaran koto o boku wa tada Sonic omae ga kini kuwanai dake da so itsa wakari yasuku te iya ja yaru ka and Sonic kind of being more jokey. He's kind of more jokey. He's kind of trying to be more cool. He also gives off more of a cool attitude with Mayakawa as well. It's very interesting and I think there's no real difference between these two Sonics and that's fine because they are basically the same. I don't really separate them because they are too close to be different Sonics. Mayakawa just adds a little bit of his flair to it and that's pretty much it. Unlike every other Sonic where they are totally wrong and totally don't get Sonic but sometimes they have good ideas with him and different things like that but they're not Sonic. Now that's not to say that they can't be Sonic, because a lot of the American ideas can come to the Japanese. The Japanese Sonic team has used a lot of American stuff for their Sonic stuff. It's not out of the question for them to use it themselves, but it has to be put in the context of the Japanese. That's why Mayakawa kind of works so well, because he adds his own little American ideas in there, but doesn't fully make him the American Sonic. That's what they did with Unleashed. They added chili dogs. It had a great reason to Unleash to have chili dogs and to have Sonic have a favorite food, but these had to be implemented in the game naturally by people who understand Sonic. 
even for another thing about Sonic, Sonic is actually not a fast paced character or a fast moving character. Sonic is not fast all the time. Whenever I hear someone talk about Sonic being fast, they always got to bring up the idea that, oh, Sonic is jolting from here to there to there to there. No, Sonic is not always a fast character. And like I said in previous other facts, Sonic is known to relax. Sonic is not really a fast character unless he is going literally fast. Sonic is not really a fast character and I don't get why every speedster has to be a very fast character in everything they do. Sonic is not that way. He is a normal guy with speed. That's kind of what the idea of Sonic is. Even going into the Sega mandates, it makes no sense why so many people have a problem with these mandates. A lot of these make sense for Sonic's character and enhances what they did before. It keeps Sonic, keeps them the same for most of the stories. Ian Flynn is not a good Sonic writer. Deal with it. I'm sorry, but Ian Flynn is not the most capable person to write Sonic, and Sega's mandates should be the easiest representation of why he's not. Like for instance, Sonic can't cry. It makes sense. Sonic's introverted character character is not usually allowed to cry. When you're an introvert, sometimes you don't show your emotions like that. So Sonic to cry is a rare occasion. Like with Chris, it's very rare. Sonic is not a crying type of character. And also this thing that I really don't like, the idea that Sonic can be in a relationship. I think that's fine if you want to think of Sonic in his ideal way he's supposed to be represented. But as a character, I feel that that's a little weird. And overall, it kind of contradicts itself because isn't Sonic kind of crushing with Amy and Frontier, so I don't know about that mandate as much because Ian does say some stuff that doesn't make sense. But to be honest, the whole um characters that are male can only turn super kind of makes no sense, and I think Sega got rid of that for a reason. But even going into the idea of Sonic being off model and stuff like that, it kind of makes sense because Sonic is supposed to be a kind of solidified character, but I think a lot of his magic does come from the idea that he is kind of different in each iteration of every game, but he still feels Sonic. And I think that still makes sense for them to want Sonic to be on model and Sonic's models lately have been pretty shitty but Sonic should have a clear model because they want a clear silhouette and a clear character model that can work for Sonic I wish they did something better or maybe change it up every once in a while because they want to have new different things but the one we have now is alright but it's not the greatest thing for Sonic also with Quills I'm a long Quills guy Modern Sonic's not these short Quills what's the point of that I don't know he's supposed to be looking lengthier taller so eh even going into that idea that Sonic has no flaws, it literally makes no sense. Someone having flaws does not mean that they have something that they have to develop in, that they have to change in. Sonic being flawless is not a thing. I just explained earlier that Sonic has these flaws. Sonic can't swim. Sonic is introverted and can't be around girls like that. Sonic is not the best at thinking things through. Sonic also has an observing attitude which usually gets him in danger. Sonic has all these flaws that are a point to his character. Sonic and Goku can have these flaws and still be flat character arcs because they do not develop dramatically. It does not mean they can or cannot develop. It is possible to be done with these flat character arcs. It is not out of the idea for Sonic or Goku to get development, but for the sake of their flat character arc, there is no real lie that they believe. There's just a small thing they can really change, so the idea of really having a character arc doesn't really work for those characters. For me personally, I think they can have one. It's not something that's really a lie that they believe, so I don't really think it would fully work in my context but it could work if you really think about it and really go in depth on the flat character arc overall the flat character arc does not allow for them to have that type of development they can develop in very small ways but they are mostly going to be the same at the end of the day here are two examples i'm gonna bring up and how they are different but no one can really tell the difference between them which is why i think they are the same sonic and i'm gonna prove it to you let's talk about two games that a lot of people say sonic quote-unquote matured when he literally just became japanese sonic Sonic Unleashed and Sonic and the Black Knight. That whole era of Sonic is kind of defined as Sonic maturing. But overall, no one has said, I see a starking difference between Sonic and the Black Knight and Sonic Unleashed whenever they're talking about his character. Every time they talk about those games, they don't talk about how starkly different his character is. Only people like me, Pariah, and people who look at the Japanese would know that. But enough about the characterization. I think that's everything I want to go through right now. If I have anything else, I'll make it another video. But overall, going into these characters, I now just want to talk about what this effect has on the Sonic franchise and what I don't like about it and what I think he could be better and different stuff like that. Let's go on to the real main focus of this video, Sonic and how he represents Japanese and all the different characterizations of Sonic. 
With Sonic, he is at the core Japanese. His main themes revolve around Japanese things and Japanese ideas. Like for instance, Kami. Kami is kind of described as being God, but not just God. It can be anything. Kami could be anything. You can worship anything. You can worship the mountains. You can worship the trees. You can worship a person. You can worship anyone. Anyone can be a Kami. Sonic kind of goes through that idea, especially with Naoto Ashima kind of saying that, oh, Sonic is kind of like a fairy even in sonic's original creation he was kind of described as being this kind of omnipotent thing that just kind of does what he wants and kind of just kind of represents this idea of freedom sonic overall is kind of a guy who represents the idea of freedom and the good in people sonic kind of revolves around the idea of environmentalism these things make up sonic sonic is kind of the embodiment of good because sonic is good sonic is his own definition and the human definition of good we look at Sonic and we want Sonic to be this imperfect mess, want him to not be this flat character arc which goes to push the themes of the story. We instead want Sonic to just be some other generic character like a Vegeta or whatever or any other character that develops. Sonic does not need to develop because he is the embodiment of good. He is a flat character arc. He does not change dramatically. He can go through very small changes like he has in most games, but he does not need a giant starking character arc to change him forever. Ever. Sonic does not need a specific story like Shadow, Silver, Blaze. And even the last thing I want to get into, Junichi, he actually has the most understanding out of any voice actor for Sonic. Jason Griffith, he's my favorite, but no. Ryan Drummond, he's my second favorite, but no. Roger Craig Smith, he's not even close to my favorite, but no. Devin Mack, he does not understand Sonic either. He likes Sonic, he's influenced by Sonic, but he does not understand Sonic. Junichi, he actually understands Sonic to a T. If you look at Sonic's YouTube channel where they do an interview, Junichi literally goes in depth on how much of an understanding he has for Sonic and usually it could make more sense in Japan because in Japan they don't usually play over a billion characters and they also have to think of it in an artistic perspective they have to think of it as that character they have to get into that character a lot of American voice actors can do that but it's not always going to be successful for instance the spectacular Spider-Man and talking about Into the Spider-Verse he said that spectacular Spider-Man was young and naive enough to understand what Miguel was saying and be on his side but that doesn't make sense to his character character in Spectacular Spider-Man, but every voice actor does not understand their character. Junichi has a special connection to Sonic. He even talks about it. He talks about how Sonic changes him in a positive way and how it influences him and how he has a deep connection to Sonic, kind of like how I do, but also how he can understand him. He can think like him. He can think of what he would do next. That's why Junichi is the best Sonic for me, and I'm probably the second. I'm kidding, but overall, Junichi Kinomaru, he is the best Sonic because he understands Sonic. He even goes over the these ideas I've talked about previously, the Sonic being kind of introverted, the Sonic kind of having feelings for Amy. These things do exist. It only exists when you understand the character of Sonic like Junichi does and how I do and Pariah and Fukuro Hoseki does. Sonic overall gets Goku comparisons and I think it's pretty valid. They're not one to one the same, but they are both flat character arcs that kind of follow their own ideals. They don't follow a certain idea that is just, oh, we're the heroes. Goku has been described by creator Akira Toriyama as not being a hero. Sonic himself and his creators have said he does not think of himself as a hero. He just does what he thinks is right, just like Goku. Both of these characters have both had flack for being very boring, very not interesting, not relatable enough, but that's what makes them unique. They're very different, kind of instills this idea of Buddhism and fighting for the betterment of oneself mentally and physically, just like Sonic kind of goes for the ideas of the good in people the good that we all have inside each of us and that how we can perceive that and can kind of take that in different ways sonic also represents freedom the freedom of people and how people should be able to live any way they want people should be able to push themselves to their next level to be able to go wherever they want push themselves to be whatever they want to be even with goku's theme kind of being about oh you should always want to embed yourself make yourself better make yourself stronger make yourself do whatever you want to do you 
you have no limits. These characters, these flat characters are made to push people. They are made to push everyone, including the people in their own world. They hold these themes. They hold these less imperfections because they are overall supposed to push the narrative forward. That is what a flat character arc is made to do. Push the narrative forward. Sonic and Goku are both made to develop Vegeta and Shadow. Sonic and Goku are both made to develop Silver and Trunks. They are made to do the same thing. They are flat characters. They influence people around them. They do not get influenced. That is the other characters in the Sonic and Dragon Ball world. They hold this because it is a long lasting series with Dragon Ball and with Sonic the Hedgehog and they can live on forever. This is why Sonic is described as a fairy because Sonic is made to live on forever. This character, this guy that they made, this hedgehog that they made is made to live on forever. They are meant to stay in our minds to help us be better, to help us live better, to help us and help with these general themes make us feel like a better person. Make us feel more inclined to help with the environment. Make us feel more inclined to embetter ourselves. Make us feel inclined to add more freedom. I personally take those ideas into my own life because that's what they were made to do. We don't just add themes for the sake of adding themes. We add themes because these can help people. These can make people better. These can also improve their lives. A lot of Eastern culture and a lot of Eastern stories are made for the embetterment of people, the embetterment of you, the embetterment of me, the embetterment of the entire world. These stories are made to connect, but also change and maybe even take inspiration and influence. This is why I don't like the idea of people who don't like these flat characters or just certain characters in general or certain stories because maybe they're just not fully action based or maybe there's not this or that. It's because they're not really looking at it for what they're trying to do, especially flat characters. They don't look as a flat character as an idea of where you could be as a person. Not because you have to become Sonic or become Goku, because they hold certain ideas that you can use in your general life. Just like Persona is all about the emotions you have and, and certain things that flaws that people go through and things that you can embedder and things that you can make yourself do better and even going into manipulation different stuff like that in the themes of persona persona is made to overall influence you to do some things better with your life to help out to be more relatable to be more connected to you to help you out to even just help them out making great stories these stories work because of how they're themed and how they're pushed in their themes and how they are very instinctually human and how human connections work the most with story i don't care about anime fights i don't care about power scaling i don't care about how this character is supposed to be different how we should accept every character because what we got is what we got and it is made to help Help us and is made to push the themes that they are trying to go for in their company, in their stories, in their character. I'd rather go through that. I'd rather accept the story as a story because I'd rather see what narratively they're going to do to push this theme, push this character, push anything they're trying to do with the story in general because that's what you're there for. You're not there to just get action. If you want to go see action, go and watch 50 fights on YouTube. You can have action. Sure, I love action. I love all that. But you come there also for the story and for what these characters do for you. Heck, even Emmy Jones, who made Sonic and Tails R, which is great. It is the best Sonic story ever. That story is story first and foremost. It takes development of Tails, who needed more development. It takes point of Sonic's flat character arc, where it enhances what he does to help Tails to embedder himself and his influence against everything around him. Sonic is a great character, as he is. I push for Japanese Sonic, and I'm going to push for him because he's Japanese Sonic. He's the guy that I want to be around. I don't want Ian Sonic. I don't want anyone else's Sonic because those Sonics suck. They don't feel right because they aren't taking the right influence. I can say Emmy Jones is better than any other writing for Sonic in the American side because Emmy actually understands Sonic. She even, back in one of her old videos, talks about how she she literally has this idea of what Sonic is. She liked from Adventure all the way up to The Black Knight, which I think is actually the last game in Japanese Sonic's side being in the American view. She says that's Sonic for her. Anything else never felt like Sonic. That was her thing. She said that felt like Sonic. She felt connected to the Japanese side of Sonic. Even she said before, she listens to Sonic in Japanese. She clearly has a love for Japanese Sonic. And 
And that's the thing. Why every time I always bring this up, not a problem, but Wendy. Wendy is a person who has been translating all this Sonic stuff. She translates all the stories and stuff like that. And that's how Parag gets her stuff. That's how Fukuro Hoseki gets her stuff. But every other YouTuber just ignores her, even though she's the one translating most of the stuff you use. Nick, I'm just telling them it's not a diss or anything like that. Wendy writes most of the Japanese Sonic manuals. If you look there, it says Wendy wrote them. I was baffled when I saw that because Wendy has been around for a while and no one has talked about her in the main zeitgeist of the american side wendy has been around for years helping out translate japanese stuff she still does she literally just translated frontiers in japanese which is starkingly way better than the american side the story is still pretty eh but overall the characters feel more in character wendy has translated every game her account is gone now on youtube sadly she made a new one for frontiers so go subscribe to that i'll leave it in the link in the description but Overall, she has been keeping the influence of Japanese Sonic alive because there are fans. There are at least 11,000 people, maybe even more Japanese Sonic fans. I actually talked to a couple in my Twitter, my Discord, and different stuff like that because Japanese Sonic holds more ground than anything in the American side. Pontac and Graf, Ian, whoever worked on Sega in America back in 1991, they do not understand Sonic. They didn't even understand the Japanese market. And to people who think, oh, it was back in the day, it's, it's a totally different era. We totally have more understanding. We should kind of just still be okay with it. No, it's not okay either way. I'm still mad they kept it inconsistent from back in the day. It shouldn't have been inconsistent. Dragon Ball works because it's still doing things, but by the original Japanese. Most of the dubs and stuff now are done to compare to the original Japanese. Sonic did that for a short amount of time in 2003 to 2009, before 2010. Of course, because that's when Pontiac and Grab took over and messed up the franchise because people had this corrupted idea of Sonic from the beginning. Sonic from the beginning was supposed to be this way, but because of Sega of America, they changed it. And that makes me very pissed because this character could be so much more. And like I've said before, Ian Flynn is not the right person to be taking over Sonic. Ian Flynn is the worst person. He literally writes like Pontac and Graf, which he does in IDW. No offense, it's a totally different character, but it feels like Pontac and Graf with just his Archie Comics writing. I don't like Ian Flynn, not even in Frontiers, because in Frontiers, he's still doing things Sonic is not supposed to do. The first words that come up in Sonic's theme and Sonic Adventure is I don't show off nor criticize. Sonic does both of those things things in Frontiers and in IDW. IDW is admittedly, by Nick the Game Apologist, already known to not be Sonic. It is a totally different interpretation of Sonic by Ian Flynn and that's what they are doing in the games now. Ian Flynn took over and they hate that he took over because he's not good. Even the stories don't feel good. Like, they don't hold any real themes to them. They don't hold anything. I even thought about multiple ideas in my head on how the Zombot arc could have kind of been implemented into this whole theme of environmentalism and a corruption of people and different stuff like that but overall Ian Flynn never thought of that he just kind of went with like a general idea of what the story is about and kind of just pushes that and I think he said that on a Bumblecast one time which is why I really don't take what he says to T even people who take him as the guy who gives the canon it's kind of weird but you do you I guess I don't really judge you for that I don't really feel like you're a problem for that even though don't come to me with it not gonna lie because I will tell you no the Japanese says this bye but overall I think that Ian Flynn is not the best take for Sonic going forward. I don't know how Emmy feels about Sonic and Frontiers, but Emmy would be a way better choice to take over for Sonic. Heck, Pariah would be a way better choice, and I haven't even seen his Tales comic coming out yet. He just sounds way better understanding Sonic than anyone at Sonic right now does. A lot of the characters are in character there. I'm sorry that you have to hear that. It's still a very fun game, a very cutesy game, but it's not Sonic overall. Even I'm going to go into kind of a lately thing with Twitter. I saw a certain post on Twitter where they were talking about how any Sonic is Sonic. Any Sonic can be Sonic, which I think is totally wrong. There is no any Goku is Goku because Goku is solidified as Goku. The only problem Sonic has compared to Goku is that he's been inconsistent from the beginning. Sonic has had multiple interpretations for years and it makes no sense. Just Sega of America changing things or them changing things because people in America don't understand the context of everything. Sonic as a character should be Sonic, which is why 
I go with Japanese Sonic more than anything. That is the true Sonic. Japanese Sonic has been consistent in every medium before the American could even get one right. He's been the same in the Japanese for the longest time. Sega of America has this problem of changing up his character here, there, 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 and there, and there. Like, there's no need. Heck, I even saw, there's no diss to Evan Tails channel. I love talking to someone else first getting into this. But he talked about how, well, we shouldn't limit everyone to one Sonic because that overall goes against Sonic as a character. Sonic is meant to be interpreted in multiple ways. He was not. If we want to go with that, we're gonna go with the same idea as with batman batman is a character that he doesn't kill that he doesn't shoot people that he doesn't murder if batman comes out murdering someone no one's gonna have discourse actually he has in batman v superman and any other time batman has killed the general zeitgeist knows that batman should not kill that is a core of his character of course there are different versions of batman here and there but overall that's kind of a core idea that has stuck with batman for years and just like sonic there should be a core idea of sonic that has been there for years because it has been there for 31 say 32 years sonic in japan has been consistent and he is the original sonic because sonic was made in japan he was made with japanese ideals in mind he is a japanese franchise Sonic is Japanese first and foremost and I don't like the idea that we should disregard that because of inconsistencies over the years. Sonic is Sonic. Keep it that way. There should be no changing. You can like any other version but we should also strive to have the correct Sonic in the forefront. There are plenty of Sonic fans who talk about it on Twitter and on Instagram and on YouTube. Well only like a couple but overall Sonic is Sonic. I don't think we should be pushing for any other Sonic. We can have our movie Sonics. We can have these other Sonics but they aren't Sonic. They're just another character with the name Sonic and we can accept that and we can have their stories. Movie Sonic isn't the same and none of the Sonics are the same. They don't take off the central idea of this Sonic. The Mario movie works well because Mario is Mario. Be like some, oh what that doesn't make any sense. Mario doesn't have a real character. He does. You just have to look at other contexts besides, you know, uh, voices and how they act. Like he acts pretty positive. He acts in a certain way that kind of makes Mario have a certain character that can be shown in the movie and in the mario movie he comes off as mario we don't think that he's not mario even in my idea bowser is bowser in that movie even though he has jack black mannerism and stuff like that he's still bowser bowser in sunshine is very silly bowser in mario odyssey is very romantical it makes sense for bowser to be his way in this movie but also be menacing which he is in the movie i think that worked because he's more accurate to the character mario luigi and bowser are all accurate to the character donkey kong's another thing and princess peach not at all i may make another video about princess peach and how she could have been written and stuff like that but overall princess peach is not in character she is not in character and there's a perfectly good way to keep her flawed and to make her the video game peach it's like oh it's based off the manga why even going into mario's character it's really more of a caricature mario is kind of a caricature and that's kind of his character at its core yes but he can also become a character mario has enough pieces in place that can make all of their characters characters like they are characters in a physical way but they aren't characters in a mental and action kind of way they kind of do things for the sake of it being a video game but the mario movie brings out that idea that they can be those characters they can be actual characters this is why i feel so mad when peach is being known because peach isn't actually that way even if you may say oh the mario characters are caricatures that is true but overall they have certain personalities things that they add to that character to make them kind of a character. Pariah is literally making a story about Japanese Sonic in Sonic 2 and interpreting it in his own way. I'm making personal stories about Sonic, some I may actually put on this channel and some that is going to stay secret, but overall, Emmy has made stories about the true Sonic. People can make multiple creative stories about Sonic, they don't need a different interpretation to do that. That's just literally accepting defeat instead of actually pushing for something more. Evan specifically talks about how we can always push for Sonic to have momentum, we can push for Sonic to have this type of gameplay, but he doesn't really push for Sonic to have this type of character, oh because it limits the character, but no it ignores who Sonic is at the beginning. Sonic as a character is the embodiment of freedom, the good in all people, and just being Japanese Sonic. If you take that away he's not Sonic, but overall Sonic is supposed to be this character. We can't take away from it just for the sake of oh interpretation of 
character. If someone writes a story about OKKO OK or Steven Universe, I expect them to be in character. Maybe if you take a darker take, I still expect them to be in character. Just like how we expect Goku to be in character in the Japanese. Just like how we expect the translations and the subtitles and everything to be right in anime. Maybe it's because I'm a weeb and maybe I'm just thinking of it the wrong way. You can like your interpretation, but you have to also accept the fact that that is not the correct interpretation. You can like someone's interpretation of Goku from their little fan project, but overall, if Goku's not in character, then what do you like him for? You just like him because he can be anything? No, Sonic is not something you could just mold into anything. Sonic's stories can be molded into anything because they overall have not kept up with that environmental theme and has just kind of went on into an adventure kind of theme. But overall, you can't take out the core of Sonic because it's not Sonic anymore. Think about what you're making and make it around the Japanese Sonic because that's the true Sonic. Technically, you can do the Ian Flynn Sonic because overall, he's the quote-unquote real version of now. Overall, I don't accept him. He is not the best writer for Sonic. Emmy Jones is better, like I said before. And overall, I've sung the praises of Emmy Jones and her singing, but not really her writing. And I'm doing it now because she is great. And even to kind of go into this idea of, well, we can't write Japanese stories because we're not Japanese. That doesn't make sense. Just understand the Japanese and be able to write a Japanese story perfectly fine. There are multiple games that even Pariah goes into that goes into the Japanese stories and how to write like them. Even in another YouTube video called Western versus Eastern Storytelling, What's the Difference? by Literature Devil, he even talks about this idea of that Japanese stories are more about character and the development of the character, no matter if the plot ends or not, and different stuff like that. Even going into the American side, the American side kind of goes into more of this idea of power and kind of overpowering the person physically instead of mentally, like a lot of Eastern storytelling kind of does. Even with Pariah 6 9 5's Sonic is fundamentally Japanese, he goes into these other ideas which go into what Sonic is about and how his Japanese influence goes into it. I brought up some of it here, just kind of a, a complimentary piece to it. So watch this and watch that when you're done. Because Pariah has actually been the main person who has been kind of pushing my influence to kind of solidifying Japanese Sonic as peak Sonic and the only Sonic to be around. Why do I say that? Because I used to always have this idea that Japanese Sonic was the true Sonic. I've always had this idea of the anime effect in the back of my head. You can even look at my older videos where I talk about the Japanese is kind of changing things and making things more consistent. Like the two dimensions problem that we were talking about with classic Sonic, that never existed. And even going to another person named Sonic Lore posting on Twitter, they even talked about how this could translate to two worlds, which could also translate to timelines and different stuff like that, which Silver actually does use in Sonic Rivals calling it another world which he could use to mean time. It doesn't take away from that point because overall the Japanese is the correct story. Dumb translations can mess up the story. I remember back in the day looking at one of Sam Procrastinate's streams playing through like every Sonic game or something like that. He played Shadow the Hedgehog and there was a line with the Space Colony arc with Sonic that got messed up in translation. Yo, Shadow! Hmm. そう、怖い顔すんなって。それよりあの黒い奴ら、どうやら宇宙から来てるらしいぜ。俺たちはこれからスペースコロニーアークに向かう。アーク。カモン、奴らに人は任せてやろう and Radical Soda pointed this out and overall it didn't scratch anyone's mind or pop in anyone's mind to think hey maybe the Japanese is more consistent than the English and maybe has something that actually makes the story better or actually kind of has misinterpretations with it. No one thinks about these ideas but me, Pariah, Fukuto Hoseki, and people who like the Japanese Sonic more. And this doesn't go to every Sonic fan who only cares about gameplay. This goes to the ones who care about characterization, story, like Nick the Game Apologist, Sirius the Skeptic, Channel Pup, Wayne is Boss, different people like that. I just brought up a Sunset City cast because I watched them a lot. And also Evan from Tales Channel and even people who just don't even know that Wendy exists. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was so mad in my original recording because Evan from Tales Channel, Splash Dash, slash LS Mark, they both follow Wendy. 
which is weird to me because Wendy literally translates most of the games and Splash Dash doesn't take that into account whenever he's making any of his videos or even studying the Japanese. Even Evan doesn't study it and it's very weird to me. But overall, Snapcube knows about it even though she doesn't really make Sonic videos except for the fan dubs. She uses those videos to dub over. But Emmy Jones follows Wendy and she uses Sonic the right way and she has been stated to like Japanese Sonic more. So it makes sense that she is doing this right that she actually understands sonic she even complains about certain things they do in idw which all pushes the fact that idw sucks i don't want to diss anyone who likes idw it's just it's not sonic and we can praise it sure it's a good comic that goes with the sonic name but overall it doesn't work for me because it just doesn't feel like sonic it feels like ian flynn writing archie again and i don't really care for archie anymore even though i used to love it as a kid and I used to adore it or used to love looking at it before I knew anything about Japanese Sonic or even the idea that it could have been two different versions of Sonic. And the thing is, this doesn't just go for a Sonic. It can go for Mario. It can go for Final Fantasy. It can go for Persona. It can go for anything. If overall, the stories were made by Japanese people taken into account by Japanese standards, taken into account by Japanese storytelling, characterization, theming, different stuff like that. Take in those ideologies as well. Those will help you understand the stories more i especially learned that a lot being a dragon ball fan because being a dragon ball fan you actually think about this stuff and you kind of learn about buddhism you start learning about certain meanings behind certain things in dragon ball there are those types of certain things in sonic the hedgehog itself and i think people should take this into account when looking at these stories which could probably make them more beautiful better narratively written and just overall make more sense and just feel japanese sonic overall is made for a America. He did have the personality of Bill Clinton, the design of Felix the Cat, and the shoes of Santa Claus, or whatever. But overall, he is written by Japanese people who are trying to write something for America, and it's succeeding because Americans like Japanese stuff. So accept it that it's Japanese, and that Sonic is Japanese, and we could be happy. But overall, I don't think you can. And like I keep saying, you can like any interpretation of Sonic that you have. But overall, I want you to at least understand that that's not Sonic, and that may not be the truth true Sonic, but overall, it's just Sonic. That's not Sonic. That's a different character, but I still love him for who he is. Just accept that. I don't want to start discourse with any YouTubers I mentioned in this video, but overall, they are just not the right people to talk about Sonic. Heck, I even have a giant problem with Cirrus's Shadow the Hedgehog Should Stay Dead video, because it overall, what I've heard from his conversations and stuff like that, he does not understand Shadow. A lot of people in America sadly don't understand Shadow. For some reason, they don't know how to interpret Shadow the Hedgehog, which is weird to me. But overall, enough rambling. I just really want to say, like, I don't have any dissing towards anyone. I really just want Sonic to be Sonic. That's all I really want. Sonic is such an influence on my life. I really don't know where I would be if I didn't watch or play the games of Sonic. I wouldn't be having probably as much fun as I did. I wouldn't be as much of a fan as I am now. I probably wouldn't have such a love for Sonic as I do now if I wasn't even a Dragon Ball fan. If I didn't get into Sonic and Dragon Ball, I don't really know what I'd be doing right now. Maybe I would just be like everyone else doing the most weird stuff. But Sonic, I don't know. He just kind of influenced me. I don't know. Maybe because I just grew up and I just kind of grown up into my age and kind of maturing in a kind of ideal sense that Sonic kind of wanted. Not saying that he wanted us to grow like him, but just kind of this idea that like as I mature, I can develop and I can help out people and I can do different stuff like that. And Sonic's character is so integral to that for so many fans. The embodiment of good in everyone, the embodiment of good in people, the embodiment of good everywhere in the world, and him just letting us being players who play the video games of Sonic. Even if they're good, if they're bad, Sonic holds this giant impact on us because Sonic is a fairy. Sonic is made to stay forever. Sonic is made to influence. Sonic is made to push us. Sonic is made to make people happy. Even if his games aren't the best, everyone finds the game they have fun with, and I think that's what's integral to Sonic, that you find him fun. Like with Frontier, I may not like the story all that much, and I may not like the character that much, but I can say I have fun with the game. I go back for every DLC because I have fun with the game. Sonic is such a great idea and such a great concept that no one really understands, and if you don't understand it, that's fine. I still feel weird when you like this character, but you like a different interpretation of him, even though that's not fully him. And it kind of just confuses your brain on certain things, like Sonic having an ego. I feel so dedicated and so mad about these things because these things 
really matter to Sonic's character. If we didn't have these, it wouldn't be Sonic. He wouldn't be this embodiment of good. He wouldn't be the influence we have now. Sonic does what he does for us because he's just being him. He's just being Sonic. He's just being cool. He's just being introverted. He's just being all those things that we can relate to and we can also use for the betterment of ourselves. I wish more people would get that idea and stop worrying about Sonic being a hero because he's never a hero. None of us have to be a hero to do good in our lives and that's what Sonic represents. Just like with Amy, we don't have to be the strongest or we don't have to be the, the smartest. We just have to be ourselves to have an impact on the world. And I think more people should take this stuff from Sonic instead of worrying about all this action. I think story is still important. I think story is the biggest point to push Sonic forward. But I'm just saying like story is cool and all, but these characters add so much to those stories that that should be more important than just the story itself. But also I think that these characters are very important to the Sonic franchise, especially Sonic himself. And we have Goku, we have Naruto, we have all these characters who have been the same for years, but Sonic's not allowed to be Sonic? That feels weird to me. You may say Sonic doesn't care what you think of him and stuff like that, but Sonic lives by himself. He lives to be himself. Sonic is himself when we have his characterization right. If we accept Sonic's characterization, we accept Sonic. Sonic doesn't really care for acceptance. He doesn't care if he's the hero or the villain. But guess what? What do all of Sonic's friends have in common in Sonic Adventure? They all understand that Sonic is Sonic. In each story in the Japanese, they may have Tails, Amy, Knuckles, or Gamma, and all of them change when they see Sonic. But overall, whenever Sonic is in their stories, Sonic is always the same. Sonic is always the same because they understand Sonic. They've been around Sonic. They've been influenced by Sonic. Sonic is being himself. Him being himself is what influences everyone to be who they are. Sonic may not be a hero, but he has heroic traits. Sonic is strong. Sonic is confident. Sonic is easygoing. He lives his life to the fullest. That is an ideal that some people do need or things that some people do want. Sonic is that kind of getaway character. That getaway character to a character that is completely good, who is completely pure, who may have his little flaws, but they don't make him a horrible person. They don't make him a little bit bit of a jerk like the American side does. I like how people want Sonic to be this hero type when he was never that. I never understood that idea. Ian Flynn makes no sense with that idea. Nick does not make no sense with that idea. He may like that Sonic and that's fine, but overall that's not him. That is not what Sega intended. That is not what Sega of Japan intended. Sega of Japan had this clear idea. This is what Izuka, Oshima, and plenty of other writers for Sonic think Sonic is. Even the writer for Sonic Unleashed, she is going on to do classic Sonic most of the time in X and in Unleashed, and she has the most understanding of Sonic, and that's who we should really be following with people like Pariah, me, Emmy, anyone else who actually understands the Sonic that is supposed to be, and not the Sonic that we want. We want the American Sonic, we want the Archie, the IDW, the Adventure of Sonic, the Hedgehog, the Sad AM, we want all these Sonics, but they aren't Sonic. Just accept that fact and you can like whatever you want. Everyone has their own opinion and their own headcanon on what Sonic would do. Everyone may not be able to get Sonic 100% correctly unless they put in the research, but Sonic is so beautiful, so intense, so magical, so mystical, so great because of what he is. He's Sonic. He's influenced by Japanese influences. He even has his own American influences and he's made for Americans and Japanese people, but is written in Japanese. We love anime. Most of us, I can tell you, probably love anime. I've been influenced by anime for the rest of my life, but Sonic was the one to connect to me on a deep level. Sonic was the anime that I fell in love with the most. Sonic is an anime like in Sonic X, even though it's not the best series, but it's pretty great. And Sonic is Sonic. Sonic changes the characters. If Sonic didn't exist, there would be no Sonic the Hedgehog. There would be no Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3. There would be no rival to Mario. There would be none of that stuff because all we would have is someone who doesn't understand this idea and this ideals of freedom, these overall kind of ideals that Sonic has. Sonic has these ideals that we should aspire to have sometimes. I love every Sonic YouTuber. Every Sonic YouTuber brings in their own ideas and their own sense of stuff. But overall, when we have these genuine problems about characters, characterization, and story, and all of that, most of this stuff would have probably been fixed 
way better if we actually understood who Sonic was at his core. Not just by, oh, we went to the Japanese stories. No, if we actually understood Sonic at his core from his character, first and foremost, because mostly every character is consistent. That has never been a contradiction in the Japanese. Mayakawa Sonic is not different from classic Sonic. I just separate them because Mayakawa adds a little bit of a thing there for Sonic. It is not a totally different character. But if you understand the character as much as you understand that story, you will feel better and you will have a better time. And we can actually think on improving Sonic like Evan talks about so much when he was talking about Sonic Frontiers. He talks about changing the gameplay. But what about the characters? Can we have our Sonic back? The Sonic who was pure. The Sonic who was the embodiment of good. The Sonic who influenced all of us. The Sonic who made us happy. The Sonic who took over Mario. The Sonic who had the best gameplay. We want that Sonic back. I don't want this idea of American Sonic. I don't want this shitty Ian Flynn Sonic. I don't want that idea. I want the true Sonic and that's all I personally care about. But that's all I have to say on this subject. I hope you guys enjoyed this and happy birthday Sonic when this comes out. And I'd like to thank Pariah Fukuro Haseki and Sonic lore posting and Emmy Jones and every Sonic YouTuber forever existing. They influenced me to keep on going. They influenced me to do this and I'd like to thank Sonic Team for making the games they did. If it wasn't for them, Sonic wouldn't exist and the original creators except for the one that's in jail. But overall, I'd like to thank everyone including you who watched this and I will see you guys next time. Sonic! Sonic?